A very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you, and these are the headlines. China blocks India's attempt to list Masood Azhar as global terrorist for the fourth time. Places technical hold on terror listing the Jaish e Mohammed chief at United Nations Security Council meeting. India asserts it will pursue all avenues to bring a terrorist to justice. Expresses disappointment at China's stand on Masood Azhar. Thanks uh, other UNSC member states for their support. Supreme Court to hear review petitions in the Rafale case today. Government affidavit on the matter accuses petitioners of putting national security in jeopardy. Election Commission uh, seeks uh, ground reports from West Bengal poll authorities. Action follows after BJP demanded that Bengal be declared a highly vulnerable state. And Congress releases second list for Lok Sabha polls. Uh, 16 uh, names from UP and 5 from Maharashtra include Raj Babbar, Sri Pakash Jaiswal and Priya Dutt. BJP holds a first round seat sharing talks with Indigenous Peoples Front of Tripura. The biggest story this morning India's bid to get Pakistan based Jaish e Mohammed, the chief Masood Azhar, as a global terrorist by the United Nations Security Council, was once again blocked by China as it placed a technical hold on, uh, on it. Now, China has. Uh, asked for more time to examine the proposal. Now, this is the fourth time that China has blocked the resolution against Azhar since 2009. And reacting to the development, India expressed a disappointment. MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that India will continue to pursue all available avenues to ensure that terrorists involved in attacks are brought to justice. India also thanked other member nations for their support to designate Azhar as a global terrorist. Now, India's ambassador and permanent representative to the United Nations, Saeed Akbaruddin, also took to Twitter. He also thanked other states for supporting India at the United Nations Security Council. The proposal to designate Masood Azhar under the 1267 Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee of the United Nations Security Council was moved by France, the UK and the US on 27th of February, days after a suicide bomber of Jaish-e Mohammed killed uh, 44 CRPF soldiers in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama, leading to a flare-up in the, the tensions between India and Pakistan. All right, let's uh, get a perspective on the story. Joining us this morning is uh, Mr. Gurjeet Singh, former ambassador. And also we have with us uh, Mr. Alok Bansal, director, India Foundation. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Ambassador, if I could come to you first. China again blocking an initiative to tag Jaish-e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar as a global terrorist by the United Nations Security Council. What is your reading of the development? Uh, good morning. I think uh, first we have to be clear that the block hasn't come yet. This is a technical hold which will allow China to keep the ball running for about six months, after which there could be another technical hold which could go for another three months. Hmm. And nine months from now, China will have to take a final call whether it's going to block or approve this listing. We may recall that two years ago, they had actually blocked after undergoing this whole process. Yes. So I think the block is there, not there yet, but we seem to be on the way. Hmm. The second thing I would like to say is that I compliment the Indian side for having uh, put together a never before coalition of countries who have come around to support our effort to declare Mazood Azhar a global terrorist. Hmm. The number of countries, the kind of countries to which have come together is really quite impressive. Besides the major sponsors, uh, France, the UK and the USA, I think Germany, Japan, Australia have stood by us very firmly. Yes. And also Equatorial Guinea. We also have several other Europeans like Poland, Belgium and Italy who are on the council 
who have come out in support of hmm. this. And from our neighborhood, it is uh, Belgium, it is uh, Bangladesh and uh, Maldives who as non-members have actually co-sponsored the resolution. Hmm. So I think the effort to move towards isolating Pakistan using Mazud Azhar hmm. as the lever yes. is actually doing quite well. Right. Uh, Mr. Bansal, if, uh, if I could ask you now, uh, you know, China is the veto-wielding member of the United Nations Security Council. It had blocked the move by India and other member nations three times earlier. And when it says uh, that it needed more time really to examine the sanctions request on Masudhar Azhar, what do we mean by that? See, I'm personally extremely disappointed because I was fairly optimistic at least that this stage China will go around with the... Uh, general consensus because Chinese had made a statement earlier uh, hmm. that on this particular issue we are equidistant from both India and Pakistan. We are not with Pakistan or something. And I thought uh, they would uh, take a stand. And this sort of a motion by China shows hmm. uh, that they are unwilling to take a stand on this sort of a issue. They have been dragging the issue for a number of times. It's, uh, it was blocked earlier. Now again a technical uh, hold, another technical hold could come in. Uh, and this shows that China has still not understood the gravity of the global terrorism mm -hmm. that is passing through. Jaish e Mohammed, uh, Masood Azhar represent uh, a menace that is not only menace to India but also to China also as well. And what we also need to understand is that uh, as far as Jaish is concerned, it's already a banned organization. Yes. It's founder, leader, how can he not be a terrorist? Mm -hmm. And specifically in this particular individual's case, he was languishing in Indian jail. He was released from jail by hijacking a plane where people were killed. Now, uh, what else do you need? What technical hold? What further information do you need? Yes. So, uh, there is no doubt that China has taken a deliberate stand. And I think now time has come for India to Indeed. take a stand. I think uh, even if we have to have, a, it may be painful, but we need to take a stand. The stand could be both. Either it could be economic or it could be political. I would personally feel we must go for economic we must block uh, Chinese imports. If required, uh, go for, uh, uh, make a complaint under WTO saying that they are imposing non-tariff barriers on our uh, software exports and pharmaceutical exports on which we have certain grounds. Hmm. And we must, I think, on some ground or something, we must ensure that China feels the pain because Chinese economy is slowing down. Yes. This quarter is the slowest growth in Chinese economy in years to come, uh, yes. in last few years. So I think at this juncture, when US-China trade uh, conflict is going on, we could probably impose the cost on them. Or if we want to go for a political issue, because Masood Azhar is a political issue, then we had banned Dorkan Issa or something. If Masood Azhar is not a terrorist, Dorkan Issa certainly is not a terrorist. Mm. Uh, uh, we should uh, yes. let him come in, let him visit Dharamshala, where uh, His Holiness the Lai Lama had invited him once. All we right. could also take a stand Ambassador, on this, this is the question I would like to ask you because, you know, China did not yield to the... There was an intense diplomatic pressure from the US, France, UK, even India. And China did not yield to it. You know, India even reached out to the capitals across the world. Uh, what could be the possible reasons for that? Well, you know, I think China is playing its own self-interest and... Just as we feel that terror is the central theme for China in our region, Pakistan is the central theme. And on the two big things that India has always been asking China in the last few years, one is the NSG waiver and the second is the listing of Mazud Azhar as a global terrorist, China has not been playing ball. Hmm. So the situation has not really changed. Perhaps our expectations had changed, but diplomacy doesn't only uh, base itself on expectations. Mm -hmm. We work on hard realities. And I think we have created sufficient movement among other countries to come to this point. I don't disagree with the sentiment of Mr. Bansal, though I do think that diplomacy doesn't quite work that way. But I, yes, I agree with him on one point. We are facing a lack of political harmony with China on some of our critical issues which China sees through a Pakistani prism and does not appreciate our concerns. We need to take countermeasures and whether they can be in field A, B or C is up to us. Hmm. And I think that is where we need to build up counter pressures. Hmm. 
The third thing I think we need to be take cognizance of is that resolution 1267 under which we are now trying to list uh, Mazood Aza after yes. having listed Jem hmm. is actually a resolution which targets ISIL and Al Qaeda. Now we have to keep proving that uh, Mazood Azhar is helping Taliban, Al Qaeda, and others, hmm. and that is where the listing comes up. Unfortunately, is not so much what he does vis-a-vis -vis India, though that is what generates the temperature. So this is a nuanced diplomacy, which I think we are playing well. But yes, yes I do concede Mr. Bunsell's point that we need bilateral countermeasures to bring China to look at us more uh, clearly and unequivocally. Yes, uh, Mr. Bansal, you mentioned about uh, one of uh, the reasons, uh, we, uh, one of the ways we can actually pressurize China. And New Delhi says that it will continue to pursue all avenues to bring terrorist leaders to justice. Now, what uh, could uh, the possible avenues be? See, as I said, we could try build up consensus that we have built up, actually. But if one country continues to block it, hmm. and that's also a veto-wielding member, Hmm. We have to do something which makes the cost, uh, uh, China feel the cost. And yes. I think at this stage, China would feel the economic cost. Its BRI is not running well. Hmm. Please understand, CPAC is running into problems. Uh, Pakistan may be critical for China, but Chinese citizens are being targeted in Pakistan. Hmm. Uh, in fact, just uh, two days back, Chinese, consul, uh, Chinese embassy issued an advisory for Chinese citizens in Pakistan. So CPAC is not going well. China's FDI in Pakistan has shrank over 60% year on year. If you look for the figures for the current financial year. That means even Chinese companies are unwilling to invest in Pakistan. Now, as far as Jaish-e Mohammed's linkages with Al-Qaeda and IS. Islamic State are concerned. Yes. Let's be very clear. Pakistan banned jaish e mohammed for linkages with Al-Qaeda. In fact, uh, Jaish had actually carried out an attempt on Parvez Musharraf. Officially, jaish e mohammed is actually banned in Pakistan. But Masood Azhar continues to flout. So that's what is the problem is. Please understand, ideologically, Jaish propounds the same Wahhabi Salafist mindset and is actually a supporter of Wahhabi mindset. In fact, when well, Jash broke away from lashkar e toiba hmm. In fact, uh, when Masood Azhar was released and subsequently formed his own organization, it was primarily on the basis of their linkages with Al-Qaeda. Yes. So as far as this is concerned, I think so many countries of the world, including three uh, uh, permanent members of the Security Council, that is US, UK and, and France, France, agreed with this point of view that yes. uh, jaish e Muhammad is nothing but has uh, is a vestigial organ which has actually connections uh, with the Al-Qaeda and Islamic State and these so-called jihadi terrorist outfits. Hmm. So now having established that, uh, I think we cannot go on. I think I was, uh, to be very honest, uh, I think just yesterday or day before I had said on your channel that I was very optimistic that hmm. China would this stage either abstain or do something uh, like that. But uh, this sort of a blockage yes. uh, for a person whose credentials as a terrorist are impeccable, I would put it that Abs way. Absolutely. I think uh, is disappointing and India must do something where Chinese must feel. Because what I feel is when I have been interacting with Chinese Politburo members who come sometimes on and off, hmm. they do not understand the gravity of Indian sentiment on this particular issue. All right. Uh, while they talk to other issues, I think they don't understand the gravity of Indian sentiments on this particular issue of Masood Azhar. Yes. Either they don't understand or whatever is the case or they pretend not to understand. Absolutely. So I think a time has come when India should make it clear to them that yes, this is a serious issue and there can be no compromises. Absolutely, there cannot be any compromise because the UN had banned Jaish e Mohammed way back in 2001. But India's efforts to ban Masood Hazar has not been successful as China has repeatedly blocked the move, apparently, of course, at the behest of Pakistan. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us this morning and sharing your perspective on that big story. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you so much. On to some other news now, annual report released by the State Department alleged that in 2018, the Chinese government significantly intensified its campaign of mass detention of members of Muslim minority groups in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Washington has slammed Beijing for rights violations and deterioration of conditions. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that China is in a league of its own when it comes to human rights violations. 
The China intensified its campaign of uh, detaining Muslim minority groups at record levels, Pompeo said, as he released the annual congressional mandated country reports on human rights. Then there's China, which is in a league of its own when it comes to human rights violations. In just 2018, China intensified its campaign of detaining Muslim minority groups at record levels. Today, more than one million Uyghurs, ethnic Kazakhs, and other Muslims are interned in re-education camps designed to erase their religious and ethnic identities. Even some of our friends, allies, and partners around the world have human rights violations. We document those reports with equal force. Our aim, our aim is always to identify human rights challenges and use American influence and power to move every nation towards better, more consistent human rights practices. And uh, on to the other big story this morning. The Supreme Court uh, will today hear review petitions in the Rafale case. The center told the Supreme Court on Wednesday that documents filed by the petitioners seeking review of its Rafale deal verdict are sensitive to national security. In an affidavit, the center said that those who conspired in photocopying the papers have committed theft and they put uh, national security in jeopardy by leaking them. The center said that those who have conspired in this leakage are guilty of offenses under the Indian Penal Code, including theft by unauthorized photocopying and leakage of sensitive official documents affecting national security. The Ministry of Defense said that an internal inquiry commenced on 28th of February and is in progress over the leakage of sensitive documents and is, it is of utmost concern to find out where the leakage took place. The review pleas were filed against the 14th of December verdict of the Apex Court dismissing all the pleas against the deal procured uh, by India from France. And right now, we are joined in by Mr. Desh Ratan Nigam, who is an advocate at the Supreme Court. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us this morning. Uh, sir, now the government has filed an affidavit in the Supreme Court in the Rafale case. So what could be the implication of this affidavit in the hearing today? See, the, this affidavit is very, very important and crucial. And it brings out certain very, very important points in, uh, to the knowledge of the Supreme Court, which clearly says that the theft of information and data which has been done by photocopying sensitive documents are compromising national security and are very sensitive. And also they put the war capacity of the combat aircraft, uh, you know, in, uh, in public domain by, you know, sensitive documents being leaked uh, and unauthorizedly, you know, taken by, from the government records. So this is something very, very sensitive and uh, Supreme Court has to take a very serious note of it. This also jeopardizes the uh, national security and the relations with the uh, French government, where there is a uh, pact of secrecy between the two governments not to disclose certain sensitive information relating to war capacity of the aircraft and other information. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, for joining us and sharing your perspective on that story. So the Supreme Court uh, will hear the request to review the Rafale order today. And uh, that is one big story that we'll keep tracking through the day. And on to some other news now. The United States and India on Wednesday agreed to strengthen security and civil nuclear cooperation, including building six U.S. nuclear power plants in India. The agreement came after two days of uh, talks in Washington. The talks involved Indian Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale and Andrea Thompson, the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Arms Control and International Security. The joint statement said that the two nations committed to strengthen bilateral security and civil nuclear cooperation, including the establishment of six U.S. nuclear power plants in India. The two countries have been discussing the supply of U.S. nuclear reactors to India for more than a decade now. However, a long-standing obstacle has been uh, the need to bring Indian liability rules in line with the international norms, which require the cause of uh, any accident to be channeled to the operator rather than the maker of the nuclear power station. India, remember, plans to triple its nuclear capacity by 2024 to wean the economy of fossil fuels. And now let's get you all the election related news.
The election commission has sought a ground level report from West Bengal's chief electoral officer after BJP's plea. The BJP on Wednesday urged the election commission to declare West Bengal as a super sensitive state to ensure a fair Lok Sabha polls there and demanded that central forces be deployed at the polling stations in the state. A BJP delegation, including uh, Union Ministers Ravi Shankar Prasad, Nirmala Sita Raman, J.P. Nadda, among others, met the top officials of the poll body and apprised them of their demands. The party has also requested the poll panel to transfer those police officers whose electoral impartiality is questionable as well as the withdrawal of former Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar from election duty. The delegation brought to the EC's notice incidents wherein the state bureaucracy has become completely subservient to the TMC, negating the very doctrine of impartiality and fairness. The state assumes importance for the Saffron Party as it aims to win a sizable number of seats here. Meanwhile, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee slammed the BJP for urging the Election Commission to uh, treat uh, all booths in the state as super sensitive. She alleged that the BJP was trying uh, to hide behind uh, the central forces as it cannot win any seat in the state. What is the cause to declare all the booths sensitive? Don't you think it's a humiliation, insultation? Why BJP people are very sensitive about Bengal? Why they are so scared? Why they are so afraid? Bengal, what senior leaders, they said, absolutely lie, if I say blatant lie. And Mamata Banerjee also announced the names of all 42 Trinamool Congress candidates in the state for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. 41% of the party's candidates are women, which include Munmun Sen, Nusra Jaha, Mini Chakrabati and Mahua Moitra. Meanwhile, the Congress party has released the second list of 21 candidates for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Uh, the list consists of uh, 16 candidates for Uttar Pradesh and 5 for Maharashtra. The prominent names include Uttar Pradesh Congress Chief Raj Babbar, who will contest uh, from Muradabad, party leader Sanjay Singh from Sultanpur and Sri Prakash Jaiswal from Kanpur. The party has also fielded uh, Priya Dutt from Mumbai, North Central, Sushil Kumar Shinde from Solapur and uh, Milind Doria from Mumbai South. BJP General Secretary Ram Madhav on Wednesday held the first round of a seat-sharing arrangement with Alliance partner Indigenous Peoples of Front of Tripura for the two Lok Sabha seats in the state. Ramada was accompanied by Chief Minister Biplav Kumar Deb and they held a meeting with the IPFT Supremo. He reportedly told them that the BJP wants to contest both the Lok Sabha seats in Tripura and sought the party's support. And IPTF has said that it will contest the Lok Sabha polls in the state on its own. Voting for both the seats in Tripura will be held on 11th and 18th of April respectively. This is a democratic party and they have their own thought, they have their own ideology and that is why they are a different party. If the ideology and everything was same then they, there should be no other party, they would have BJP only. But it is not the case, so they have every right to talk whatever they want to talk. But finally, see what happened in Assam, Assam Ganaparishad departed, but at the end of the day they agreed and they uh, express their solidarity with Narendra Modi ji and Bharatiya Janata Party and they are contesting, uh, contesting along with us, all other parties of the Northeast. Same thing is going to happen in Tripura, I am confident. The Election Commission will hold its uh, first meeting with the central observers, including uh, those who will keep a check on black money and illegal documents today as part of the preparations for the forthcoming Lok Sabha polls. The Election Commission will also brief them about their roles and responsibilities while being on election duty. Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora, along with other senior officials, will brief the central observers. The meeting is the first since the election dates were declared by the Election Commission on 10th of March. The Election Commission till now has earmarked deploying over 800 expenditure monitoring observers for the multi-phase polls that begin on 11th of April.
right, let's get uh, some other news now. India and Pakistan will hold their first meeting to finalize the modalities for setting up of the Kartarpur corridor today. The corridor will link Gurdwara Darbar Sahib in the Pakistani town of Kartarpur with, with the Gurdaspur district in Punjab. Now, the meeting is being held three months after the two countries agreed on the project. In the meeting to be held at the Indian side of the Atari Vaga border, New Delhi is likely to press for a hassle-free travel of the Indian pilgrims to the Pakistani side. The meeting comes amid uh, heightened tensions between the two neighbours uh, following India's airstrike on a terrorist training camp of Jaish e Mohammed and Pakistan's uh, subsequent retaliation. And India has joined a growing list of countries that have grounded the American manufacturer Boeing's 737 MAX aircraft following the recent crash of uh, an Ethiopian Airlines flight. The crash on 10th of March happened minutes after the aircraft took off from the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa for Nairobi, killing all 157 people on board, including four Indians. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation has said that it would closely monitor the fare movement today after India suspended operations of all the Boeing 737 MAX 8s. A day after the suspension, the Ministry of Civil Aviation Secretary Pradeep Singh uh, has said that the DGCA would ensure the grounding does not affect passengers or operations. The 737 MAX is ground to be grounded. और जब तक इसमें सेफ्टी मॉडिफिकेशंस नहीं होते हैं, तब तक इसको हम लोग नहीं चलने देंगे। तो ये कार्रवाई की जाएगी और जैसे ये कार्रवाई समाप्त हो जाएगी और इसके पूरे तरीके से हम लोगों को विश्वास हो जाएगा इस जहाज पे, फिर हम लोग उसको उड़ने देंगे। Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump on Wednesday also grounded all Boeing 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 planes effective immediately. Donald Trump said that any plane currently in the air will go to its destination and thereafter be grounded until further notice. The safety of the American people and our people is our paramount concern, he said. The Federal Aviation Administration or the FAA said that the fresh evidence as well as newly satellite data has uh, prompted the decision to ban the jets. On to all the sporting action. Australia on Wednesday defeated India by 35 runs in the final ODI at Ferocia Kotla Stadium in New Delhi to clinch the five-match series 3-2. Chasing a victory target of seven, 273 runs, uh, the hosts were all out for 237 runs in their stipulated 50 overs. India vice captain Rohit Sharma completed uh, 8,000 runs in the ODI cricket. He made uh, 56 runs. Earlier electing to bat after winning the toss, Australia made 272 runs in 50 overs, losing 9 wickets. Usman Khwaja top scored with 100 runs. And that is the wrap on this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.